Hey everybody, it's the Boss Lady here coming to you today with the real Talk About It Tuesday. And um, I just wanted to come to you because I want to kind of go over some reflections that I had um, over the course of a few days here in reference to the last video I posted. So, um, not that I regret posting it or anything, so don't get it twisted. But um, I just wanted to kind of... I don't know, just kind of piggyback off of that and then just give some words of encouragement if that, you know, tickles your fancy. Um, but before I do that, I just want to show you um, some items that I picked up from Home Goods that I didn't show on the channel. I did show it on Instagram probably about a week. It's been about a week, maybe a week, week and a half ago. But I finally found the black and cream Boss Lady mug. It was $5.99. And you know, I already have, let's see if I can get it without breaking anything. I already have the white one. So I bought that to go up here in my space. And then I was just getting ready to open up this um, desk set here. Let's see if I can get the slide down. Here we go. Um, and it says, Boss Lady and My Stuff. So I was just getting ready to open it up and just kind of, you know, play around with it or whatever. Um, get my scissors here. But, um, so I just want to show you that. So this one, the white mug, I actually ordered this off of eBay. I want to say around the time that I was um, moving up into the office and then I just picked the black and white one up. I wish they had it in red too. That'd be so cute. But anyway, I'm not a big Ray Dunn fan, but you know, I got a couple, two, three pieces, I think. Probably these are the only pieces I have outside of my ornaments that I got for Christmas for 2020. Anyway, so back to what I want to um, get into. I want to sit this up here, but I don't think it's it's not thin enough. I, it'll fall. But I want to sit it right here. It can sit for now. But then it kind of washes out, so you really can't see it, see it? But anyway... Y'all know what it is. Boss lady, that's what it is. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I wanted to, just like I said, kind of piggyback off of uh, <clears throat> that video. So, and I didn't want to seem like I was being braggadocious. So if that's what anybody may have thought, please believe I was not being braggadocious. Um, I wasn't trying to brag about, you know, my blessings or anything. If anything, I wanted to be of encouragement. Um, I did have a um, fellow subscriber, sister girlfriend, uh, reach out to me on Instagram and her encouraging words were so encouraging to me. And that's another reason why I kind of want to pick off, piggyback off that video is because her words really touched my heart. Um, I know we all go through things, whether it's, um, and she even mentioned it, you know, whether it's a relationship or a job, you know, we all have some battles that we're facing, that we're fighting. And oftentimes we don't know what to do. Um, some people just stick and stay, especially when it comes to relationships. You're like, well, I can't find nobody else or nobody's going to want me. I'm damaged goods, blah, blah, blah. And that's not, that's not the ticket. <laughs> Please do not, you know, stick and stay because you think no one else loves you or will want you, or you have five kids and you know, you feel no one will be out there to love you. I am a true believer, and I have been a witness to women who've had four kids, five kids, and fell in love with someone, and they love them and their kids, okay? Um, my situation, you know, was not relationship-wise, but it was in reference to, you know, employment. And I know a lot of people, especially I'll say like the baby boomers, baby boomers are terrified to start over. Um, luckily I'm what generation, am I generation X? Why? I think I'm generation X, but anyway, I know my parents are baby boomers and you know, when you tell them, oh, the job is this, the job is that they're looking at you like, so what you complaining for? You get up, you go to work, do your job, you go home. And it's just like, yeah, sounds good, but you know, and they're like, well, what you mean by, but so, um, I'm just playing with some things as I'm talking to you guys. But, you know, they're like, what you mean by but? You know, 
you got to do what you got to do. You got to take care of your family. You got to, you know, support your family, blah, blah, blah. And I'm all for that. I really am. I'm all for supporting my family, taking care of my, my responsibilities. But I'm also, um, I'm also for peace of mind. And I'm also for, you know, getting up every day and not hating getting up. I mean, it got to the point, guys, literally where I was hating getting up. And then when my health played into it. It was like, wait a minute, you know, something's not right here. You know, why is my health becoming an issue? I don't understand this. And so, um, when that happened, I was like, yeah, we're going to have to figure out something here. Something's going to have to happen because I can't have my health being an issue. Um, you know, when my doctor, my doctor, and I don't have like, you know, um, a real old doctor, but he's old enough. I mean, he's, he's well versed in what he does. And when he was like, this job is killing you, you know, you tell me you have a husband, you love, you have a child, you adore and who looks up to you, you know, um, do you want your child to go through this? And so when he said that, um, it made me really Think about things and reevaluate things, especially because my child was going through things at her school, you know, and my child was demonstrating being stressed out too. Now, our stresses were totally different, but they were still technically the same. So, you know, I had to, I had to warn that spirit. I had to step out on faith. You guys, when I got really, really sick, and I kid you not, I literally, I closed my eyes and I started praying. And I'm like, Lord, if it be your will, seriously. And I don't want to get preachy, preachy, but sometimes you just got to go there. And for those who understand, stay with me. Um, but I literally was like, Lord, you, you know, you know my situation. You know what's going on. And I can't have my child going through this. And I can't continue to go through this. I mean, it's just, it's not okay. And so, um, you know, I, I really prayed and I prayed and I, I talked to the Lord and I was just like, Lord, you know, I got to get my baby out of that school and I got to get out of this place of employment. When I tell you there was things going on at the school and I could not be there for her, that broke my heart. I think that's what tore me down. Like I could not be there. You know, I mean, she's saying, mommy, this, mommy, that, and then the school's saying this and that. And, and I'm just like, okay, well, get up and put a smile on your face, go to school anyway. And I knew that wasn't, that wasn't me, you know, to, to tell my child, just deal with it. And then while she's dealing with it, then I'm, I'm being told, you know, it's just a job, get up, go to work, put your best foot forward, whatever. And clearly knowing in my heart of hearts, this is not okay. This is toxic you need to go. You need to get out of there. And so my first week of being sick, I was just sick as a dog. And my doctor was like, hmm, he was ready to take me off work then. And I was like, no. But then when I went back the second week, he was like, you need to get out of there. You need to go. And so I was just like, doc, you know, I got to do what I got to do. You know, I've got financial responsibilities, just like everybody else. Everybody's got financial responsibilities, you know? And so, um, that third week that I went to the doctor, the doctor said, again, you need to get out of there. And at that point, I even looked at him and I said, you got a job for me? Because guess what? I mean, yeah, there's jobs out there, but I'm not finding it. He was like, you need to do what you have to do. He said, I know it's hard. And he was, I mean, he was clear. And it was like, seriously, like God himself was talking to me through him. He, and he doesn't even realize how much of a blessing he was for me because the Lord spoke through him and said, listen, your daughter needs you. Your husband needs you. You're going to work. You're coming home. You're angry. Guys, when I tell you I was angry, I was angry. Like I would get off work and I would have to tell my family, give me 30 minutes. Give me an hour. Just so I could clear my head because I was angry. So like there was days I would come home and I would snapping, snap, crackle and pop. You know, I'm snapping on, on financial responsibilities. I'm snapping on my husband, snapping on my child. I mean, snapping. And 
it just wasn't good. And so, you know, my doctor, when I asked him, I said, you got a job for me? He said, I will see what I can do. He said, where are you looking? I said, well, I, I'm just now starting. He said, I know it's hard for you to go to work every day and um, for you to go to work every day and then come home and job search. He said, but that's something that I, I'm going to need you to do. And so I literally, literally, um, every day, every day, guys, I would go to work. I would get my piece, you know, my 30 minutes to an hour piece after coming home and then I would sit and I would apply to jobs all night long. I would put in at least 10 to 12 applications every single day. I mean, I just, I couldn't help it. I mean, some days I would do five, some days I would do three and in other days I would do 10, but I was putting in those applications and as the, the denials were coming in, I said, okay, that was a denial. Okay. That was a denial. All right. Well, let's keep going. And, you know, that's what helped me. I mean, there would be times I would be at work and I would get a, a crazy email. And I'm like, you know what? And I would get ready to snap. And I'm like, that's all right. I need to take a break. I would go take a break. I would go to the bathroom. I wouldn't be using it, but I would go to the bathroom, put an application. I would go on my lunch break, putting in two applications. I wouldn't even eat, putting in applications. Um, so... I want to be an encouragement to those who may be on a job and the job is just horrendous like mine was. Um, the job itself was not hard per se, but it was the people. Um, my supervisor, my specialist, my lead or whatever. I mean, even my manager, because she showed her true colors a week ago and I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I came to you for assistance. And as opposed to you giving me assistance, you threw me under the bus. I got you. I got you. Okay, I'm good. You know, um, flip-flops of schedules where one minute these are your hours, next minute these are your hours, next minute these are your hours. Or, oh, by the way, everybody needs to do mandatory overtime, you know, just off GP. You know, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? So... I just want to be an encouragement to those who may be going through something. It may not be a job. I mean, it could be, like I said, it could be a relationship. It could be something with your kid. Um, keep your head up. Stay prayed up. Um, when I was sick, when I was in fever, when I, I mean, I was so feverish, guys, and it was so bad. And I literally was warring in the spirit, like, I would close my eyes and I would feel like at the tip of hell, honestly, because I mean, I was burning up and I'm like, if this is what it, if this is what it feel like, Lord, let me get right. Cause I don't want to feel this heat. That's exactly, that's where I was at. And I just started praying. You know, I, I prayed about my daughter's schooling. I prayed about my employment. I got one more thing that's on my list, you know, um, and all of this, it lines up with my vision board for 2020, all of this. And I got one more big hurdle that I'm, I'm working through right now. And I know I'm going to have the victory. I've been praying to God. I've been working on trying to get it taken care of. And once I get it taken care of, I will definitely give God the praise. I mean, I'm praising him already because I already know it's done. I know he's already worked it out. I keep seeing visions and I keep reading quotes and scriptures and it's telling me, give it over to him. He's going to work it out. He's already done it. You just need to trust and believe it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm trusting, I'm believing, and I know the victory is mine. So I just want, like I said, be encouraging to those who may need this, um, Listen to your children. I know a lot of times we want our children to be the best of the best and the top of the top and do this, that, those, and the fifth. Listen to your children. Your children will not stray you. They will let you know if it's too much. Um, you know, I thought I was doing my daughter a great service and I actually was doing her a disservice. And so I feel bad about that. But God is telling me, you know, we go through things 
so that we can have a testimony, you know? So we go through some tests and trials, um, not to, not to belittle us, not to beat us down, but to make us better. And so I can honestly tell you, she's completed her first week of school at her, um, her previous school and she is doing a miraculous job. I mean, seriously, you know, um, and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. I've gotten emails from the school and they are thankful and they're like, oh my God, breath of fresh air, you know, whatever. So I'm grateful and thankful for that. I'm glad that, you know, things are turning around slowly, but surely, um, you know, working on making friendships. And so, you know, I know that will come. Um, I will say during my transition, um, I've had some naysayers. So that's one reason why I really didn't talk about it a whole lot on the channel. I didn't really want to talk about it until I know it was done. Um, but in my everyday life, I had some naysayers. Um, I had one person question, basically, I almost feel like she was questioning my faith. Um, but see, that happens, okay? So, you know, I'm telling you guys to trust and believe, but please believe me when I tell you, you will have some naysayers. You will have those who will question your every walk, your thought, you know, every move. Um, I had a particular person who questioned, why am I leaving? Um, who questioned, am I going to give a two-week notice? Who questioned, well, if the one job is not going to start until this time, then why don't you just stay at the, the current job and then just end out next week or whatever? Um, I had a lot of that. And they didn't understand my struggle. But see, they're not supposed to. Because it's not their test. So it's not their testimony. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody's not going to be happy for you. And that's okay. You know, you have to be strong. You have to have thick skin. You have to be prepared. So that when the naysayers come to you, you can be like, you know what? It's already done. It's, it's, it's good. And just let them know that your faith in the Lord has sustained you and will continue to sustain you so that you won't have to worry. So, like I said, I do have some financial obligations and um, my previous employer threw me under the bus. So, you know, as opposed to paying me for the full week, they're not, but that's okay. God is still going to provide. He's still going to take care of his own. I'm still going to be able to take care of my financial ob obligation and everything will be all right. So you have to trust. You have to trust no matter what. You know, as much as they say something negative, you come back with the positive. Always come back with something positive. Um, you know, I've, I don't feel bad of uh, walking out. Uh, because there comes a time where you just have to quit. Um, yes, it's good to leave on a good note and, and give your two week notice and all this stuff, but you know what? <laughs> this particular place, when an employer does an employment verification, they don't even talk to them. They send them to a third party and the third party, all they do is say, when the person worked there as far as dates and give what their salary was. They don't say nothing more, nothing less. They don't say, yes, the person was fired. Oh, the person quit. Oh, the person didn't give two week notice. They don't give none of that. So that right there gave me peace of mind. God said, I already don't work that piece out for you. So when you're ready, let me know. Okay, Lord. You know, so I just wanted to follow up real quick. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I want to put, do this shelf over here. I don't know. I got my little boss lady mugs, but I just realized that one of my boss lady mugs, they both go the same way. Ray Dunn does her stuff the same way. So I don't know. I might be able to kind of do it that way. Do it like that. Let me see. For now, I don't know. We'll see. The whites kind of wash each other out because this is white. And this is kind of like a cream, but anyway. Just throwing some up there for right now. Um, <clears throat> I have a few more Boss Lady mugs, but I think I'm just going to leave that one up there for now. 
Um, but yeah, so I just wanted, like I said, come and share my little items from share my items from Home Goods, and then um, I'm trying to move my chair. <laughs> Share my items from Home Goods as well as just, you know, give you a little more insight on, you know, me leaving. Um, as I sit and I reflect on, you know, my daughter's birthday coming, I actually have on my t-shirt from her birthday last year. And it says, game, what does it say? Game, game day on the front. And on the back of mine, it says, boss level. So... And I put this on purposely because, you know, I carry myself, my name is the boss lady. And I carry myself every day, all day as a boss. Sometimes you have to speak things in existence for yourself. So, and the reason why I'm saying that is because <clears throat> my desire in life has always been to be a boss. And when I say that, I'm meaning in employment. You know, I am I am the boss lady of this house, of boss land. Yes, I am. You know, I have my own personal business, so I am the boss there as well. But, you know, my business is not lucrative. So, you know, that's fine. You know, got to raise up a little bit more coins. I'm okay with that. But I, had, I have gotten to the point, I have got came to the realization that if I have to work in another establishment, okay, outside the home, that I definitely want to be in a position of authority. So it has taken me, I've been working under, you know, someone else's whatever since 1995. So it's 20 plus years, you know what I'm saying? And it's now time for me to stand up put on big girl panties, and do what I need to do. So I'm grateful for the opportunity that has been bestowed upon, upon me. I'm grateful that I've had to, for lack of better terms, kiss some frogs, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm grateful that I have gone through what I've gone through to get to where I want to be. Um, this last employer... You know, as I told you in the previous video, um, when I was hired, I was hired under false pretense. And now I see that. And the lady who came in with me, she also sees it as well. You know, things were said to her that I didn't think was cool at all. I mean, she's really not happy being told that she's mean and she's rude. And, you know, she makes the atmosphere horrible in the office. Just blew my mind. And this girl is way younger. She is as old as my daughter. But, of course, my boss was, too. So, anyway, um, everything in life is not a hindrance. So, I don't want you to think that everything is a stepping stone. It, it is a test. And how we respond to the test, then we have our testimony. One way or the other, whether it's good or whether it's bad, we still will have a testimony to tell. So, even though the job was not the proper fit for me, um, doesn't mean that it's not a proper fit for someone else. There are some other people on that team who they can handle it. You know, they can handle what's being thrown at them every which way. That's fine. That just wasn't for me. Um, and I don't want you to think that, oh, a well, boss lady, you just, you act as if you can't be told nothing. No, I can be told some things. Oh, yes. Because I'm an ever learning student. You know, whenever you get to a point of you can't tell me nothing, then it's time for you to pack up and, and go on to glory, period. Um, so, no, I'm an ever learning student and I'm always willing to learn something. But when you teach in a fashion of negativity, of hostility, of playing out being just disrespectful, that's when I stop learning and I'm like, oh, I have came, came as far as I can come. Now it's time for me to move on. And that's what I did. So please take this with a grain of salt. I hope I have encouraged multiples 
Uh, please share this because I know there are a lot of people out there who are going through some things and they just don't know which way is up. And please believe me when I tell you, God still sits on the throne. God takes care of his own. God is going to be there when no one else will be there. When your friends let you down, when your family turn their back on you, God is going to be there. So please believe me when I tell you, you know, my parents weren't supportive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank God I still have my parents, but they weren't supportive in my decision. My, Like I said, my parents are baby boomers. Um, I had some friends who were like, you shouldn't do that and you should do it this way. And I'm sorry, I'm a grown woman. I almost said something else, but I'm a grown woman and I have a connection to the father and he speaks to me. Okay. On a regular, he's not going to tell me just be like quit and then, you know, you lose everything. No, he's not going to say that, but he's going to say, okay, this is what you need to do. And literally, he spoke through my doctor, and I heard him. I listened, and I followed through. Now, I could have been one to just complain, complain, complain. Oh, my God, my job is my job. That Oh, my God, you know, complain, cuss, fuss, whatever, argue with my husband, fuss at my child. I could do that. I could have went to work every day negative. I mean, there would be days where I would be pumped up and excited. This is going to be a great day. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to let them, this and that. I would post, you know, positive things on Instagram, you know, get myself geared up. You guys think that's for you? No, that's for me. That's for me talking to myself saying, okay, hold your head up. God is on the throne. We got this. And walk in the door and 30 minutes later, boom, everything come crashing down. And I'm still like, Okay, try and keep a smile on my face. You know what I'm saying? So when God gave me the gave me the order to go ahead and move, then that's what I did. So I'm grateful. Um, I'm still getting some job offers or at least emails saying they want to call and talk to me. Um, I'm now starting to turn people away. Um, God is good. God is ever present in my life. Even though I haven't been to church in a month of Sundays, you know, he knows I still love him and I still pray and I know he's going to take care of his own. So with that being said, guys, you have a great day and I'll see everybody in a new video. Bye, guys.